So we're working on a project today where we're creating five elements of design with Van Gogh paintings. So we're recreating them. And we're going to work, be working today um, in the areas of color and in line. So with color, we are going to be using our pencil tool. We've already been working in shape where we have our um, pen tool, but now we're going to be working with the pencil tool. So we're going to be going over to our toolbar over here and clicking on pencil. The keyboard shortcut for that is N. If you double click on it, you can change your fidelity of what you're drawing. So that will make it more accurate or smooth it out. Fill new pencil strokes, keep selected. Um, we're going to unclick edit selected paths, um, but everything else you can just keep the same and hit OK. And now we're going to go through and we're going to look for color and value in the section where we're working. We also want to make sure that we have a new layer for this. Um, now I can also see everything in my navigator tool. If I go to window and select navigator, um, you can see what's going on. And we want to actually view our background layer in outline mode. So if you don't already have your background layer set to a template, you can double click it and check on the template check mark to make sure that you can still see it while we're in outline mode. And to view things in outline mode, it's just command Y. So while you're in outline mode, you're going to select with the pencil tool just by drawing around a certain value. Then hit I to select the uh, value with the eyedropper. And that will fill in that selection that you just created. So we'll do that again with the pencil tool and we will, we have to be in outline mode to select the right color, but then when I select that with the eyedropper, keyboard shortcut for that is I again, um, it will fill in those gaps. Now one thing that I'm doing is I am drawing the things that in my mind are the furthest back in my image. So as you can see, um, the sky is kind of the furthest back in the background, and then uh, the hay is a little bit closer, and finally those birds are a little bit closer even so. So as I'm selecting these different areas, I can select these kind of broader color areas in the background, and then I can add the things like the birds on top of that later. But again, I'm just making a selection by drawing it around. And then once I've drawn that area, I can hit I for that eyedropper tool, click in there, and set that color. Now as you're making these selections, you might want to kind of draw over the last selection you made just slightly so that you don't get a lot of gaps. If you do get a lot of gaps, you can go and fill those in later by drawing um, kind of a larger shape behind some of those other shapes. So you'd have to create a layer or a sub-layer that's behind there, or you could draw an object and then send it to back. So you would go to, um, you would go to a range and send, then send that to back. And again, I can select really large areas like this hay area, and I could set it as one large color, and I could do some of the other tones on top of that. So if I wanted to select kind of this darker brown, I could do that, select. And if I have a lot of similar types of colors, I don't have to select with the eyedropper each time. I can just draw that around um, to create a variety of similar colors in that one area. So here I'm just trying to find those similar colors so I can get all of the shapes that are in that color. And now in this sky area, I can start to draw the bird in. And as I'm using the pencil tool, you do not have to get it perfectly closed. You can kind of leave a tiny gap, and then that will fill in that space for you. And we're going to just try to fill up that entire area, trying to find all of those different colors as we're going along. When we're all done with this, we're going to use a clipping mask to um, kind of confine this to one space. So we're going to go to our rectangle tool, draw a rectangle over the top of the area that we want to kind of cut off or crop. And it's helpful if you're in outline mode for this so you can actually see where that area ends. And then I'm going to hold down my option key and click 
in the thumbnail of that layer. Oh, I also want to make sure that I have a stroke on this and no fill. So I'm going to hold that Option key down and click in the thumbnail to select everything in that layer and then go down to Clipping Mask and Make or Command 7 will also do that. And there I will have a clipping mask. That is the last thing that you will do. So you don't want to do that uh, before you're ready to finish that area. So now we're going to be working on the line layer. And I've created a new layer and called it line. And I'm going to draw a rectangle over that area. And I want to make sure that I have a good fill color for the background. Now, if you don't like some of the fill colors you're getting for this background, sometimes you can kind of cheat a little bit and select a different color from um, the colors that you have in other spots of your composition so that it kind of all works well together. But try to find an actual background color first, and you can always change that later. So now for this, we can use either the pencil tool or the pen tool. And we want to create just strokes on this, so no fills. So as we're going through, here I'm using the pen tool for this particular part. But again, you can use the pencil tool if you would rather. With the pen tool, if you hold the Option key and click back on the anchor that you just made, you'll delete that last handle and it'll give you a lot more control as you're working through. So again, Option key and then click back on that last anchor. To end this, I can hold my command key down and click, and that will allow me to um, just stop the path without having to close it. And if I click back on this, now I can set what I want to have for my stroke color. I can grab that with the eyedropper and then make sure that I switch that to stroke. And if I go to my stroke window, which again, you can go to window and stroke to make sure you can see that. If I go to my stroke window, I can start adjusting things like weight. I can also go to these width profiles, which are really cool, and they will actually give it more of kind of a drawn look. And I just really like those width profiles because it just makes it come a little bit more alive than just that basic line that you get um, in a lot of digital art. You can also use this width tool to pull open parts of that width profile, and you'll see that that actually changes the width profile in your stroke window. You can also kind of flip that. And you can save that width profile. So if you start to pull things apart and you say, oh, I really like that width profile. I want to use it more often. You can go down here and add that width profile to, um, to your set of width profiles that you're using. So that's kind of the cool thing of use, using that width tool as well. Um, I tend to, when I'm using... Um, either the pen tool or the pencil tool for this process, I tend to work in similar colors. So since I am creating these uh, flowers with this dark blue color, I'm probably going to go through all of these areas where the dark blue is first. So now I'm using my pencil tool to kind of draw that in. And I can still, though, adjust that path as needed. So I can go up here and start to adjust the width of that stroke and... Um, any other properties that I would like to as well. With profile, you can also change the corners. So sometimes you can have a really kind of pointy corner. Sometimes you want a more blunt corner. Um, so you can use these um, kind of width settings and stroke settings to, um, to adjust that. So you're going to just continue on with this. You can do little detailed um, areas here. Now, if I had multiple individual lines that I wanted to make all one color, I could use my path selection tool to select those. And then I could go in and change my width profile on those and then also change things like the width and the color too. So I could go into my stroke here and then make those a little bit darker. So hopefully you get the idea of how to do the line. Um, if you want to do more detailed areas, take that size down. If you finish it up and you find that that background color isn't what you would like, then you can always go in and change that again to make it more um, suited to the other colors in your composition. So you might want to go through your composition and select different colors and just kind of see what you end up with. You could also select those colors and then just choose a slightly different value. Um, to make those fit. 
uh, so again, that was color and line. And um, later on, we'll be doing texture and typography. And we've already done shape. So uh, feel free to check out those other videos to see how those are done. And thanks for watching.